13. I have interest in younger girls. That is a fantasy of mine. Is this the National League thing? You mean like Dateline and Yeah. That would be probably the cleanest, best pleasure. The cleanest, best pleasure is to have sex with a 13 year old girl. Yes, sir. Tonight, they're back. A string of suspects targeting children. It's another undercover sting. It is funny when I saw this on Dateline. That is so sick. A Dateline net crime to catch a predator. Like moths to a flame, they just keep coming. Thanks for joining us. I'm Stone Phillips. And I'm Ann Curry. It has been more than two years now since we first began our series of reports investigating online sex predators. Five different states, 129 men exposed. Tonight, investigation number six. This time, we've set up our hidden cameras in a rented house in rural Georgia. And once again, even men who have seen our reports show up at the door. We should let you know that some of what you will see and hear is explicit. Here's Chris Hansen. I got an update on Scooby Doo's car. He's going to be in an orange Ford Explorer. On this stormy summer night on a winding country road, a potential sex predator slowly approaches a house where he believes a child is waiting for him. He's driven a long way for this meeting, almost two hours. There he is, there he is. There he is. But the driver won't find a young girl inside. Instead, a Dateline investigative team awaits his arrival. All right, I mean, he's coming in. Why is this man making such a long trip in the dead of night? Perhaps because he believes a 15-year-old girl is alone inside, ready to have sex with him. Open the door and call him. He's coming. But his journey didn't begin today. It began more than a week earlier when he entered a Yahoo Georgia chat room and decided to hit on a decoy, an adult posing as a 15-year-old. It didn't take long for the 23-year-old, screen named Scooby-Doo ATL01, to steer the chat towards sex. He asked all kinds of sexual questions, like, what positions have you tried? You like doggy? The decoy says, I never did doggy before. And Scooby-Doo says, well, if we ever have sex, I'll introduce it to you. But I switch positions a lot, so you're bound to learn a few new tricks. Now, the man with the bag of tricks is walking in our house. We hired a very young-looking 19-year-old to play the part of the girl. Hey. Hey. Take you a while to get here. Yeah, well, someone can't get good directions of where they live. I'm just taking stuff out of the dryer. It'll take a second. I made you some sweet tea. Oh, really? I have to do something to keep you in the You can see. I just had to finish taking the stuff out. You'd never guess, by the way this man confidently walks into our house, that he's seen Dateline's investigations into Internet sex predators before. And he's still willing to risk being exposed on national television. Did you have a hard time finding the place? Or? Yeah, man. You got lost, huh? Yeah, who are you? Yeah. Well, who are you? I'm Dennis. In our latest hidden camera operation, this time in rural forts in Georgia, 90 minutes south of Atlanta, it doesn't surprise us that the chat rooms are full of men aware of our previous investigations. Men who want to have sex with a minor, but are concerned they might be caught on tape. Did he actually been referenced by name at this point? Did you ever see to catch a predator? Do you think that this is uh, a deterrent in some ways They're for people coming up. over? I mean, they're not coming over because they're afraid that it's media. Del Harvey, her screen name, is a member of Perverted Justice, the online watchdog group dedicated to catching Internet sex predators. It's just a matter of getting in the door. Dateline paid Perverted Justice a consultant's fee to do what it usually does, go into chat rooms posing as 13 to 15-year-olds home alone, interested in sex. Some decoys pretend to be eager about sex. That's because experts we've spoken to say young teens are often curious, even precocious, when it comes to chatting online about sex without knowing the potential lifelong repercussions of being molested by an adult. I don't know if anybody's in chat. While it's encouraging to hear our investigations have scared off some potential child molesters, others like Scooby-Doo ATL01 obviously didn't get the message. His real name is Dennis Colson, a construction worker from Atlanta. He says he's here to meet a girl named Izzy. And how old is Izzy? She's told me she's 18. So that would be cool then because she's of legal age. No, I wasn't going to do anything. The problem with that though yeah. is that I have the transcript of your online chat. Okay. So you want to start again and tell the story from the top? Yeah. OK. 
Okay. Strong is 15. And what did you guys talk about? Just a lot of different things that I shouldn't have been talking about. Give me an example. Ask her if she was a virgin. If she was a virgin. Yes, sir. And why would you ask that question of a 15-year-old I really did not girl? have, I don't know, I'm sorry, I apologize. But I really did not have any plans to do anything tonight. Did you bring condoms? No, no, sir, I have condoms in my car. You have, well then, so you did bring condoms. Yes, but they are for my, I mean, I have them for safety. But, but I mean, that's just hanging out. I wasn't going to do, I was really seriously so, swear, so, so I you, was not going to do anything. But you talk about jail. I know. I you know. can't go to jail for not doing anything. When I start to read some of his chat log, he gets up and starts pacing. What positions have you tried? Oh, God, I'm an idiot. You know how to ride? You like doggy? And then you ask... Oh, God, stop. Okay. Just okay. one more. What you say, do you, you ask if you delete all those IMs when you're done, I'd hate to have your mom get nosy. Now it's time to tell him something he already knows. Have you ever seen the program Dateline NBC? Yes, I probably have. I don't know. Oh, my God. Have you ever seen the stories where yes, yes, yes. men come to the house trying to meet yes, teens? but I wasn't trying to do that, I promise. Well, i got to tell you something. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story mm -hmm. on guys, uh, men, trying to meet <laughs> teens on the Internet. It was stupid. I'm a stupid man. That's, that's not an argument. I, um, but I would like to leave. He's free to leave, but he won't get very far. Perverted Justice has joined forces with the Harris County Sheriff's Office, providing chat logs and phone records, evidence needed to make an arrest. Here in Georgia, if a man makes a date online for sex with someone he believes to be a minor, it's a felony. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! He's arrested. Get on the ground! Put your hand behind your back. Please don't Put your hand behind your back. Please. Please. Oh my God, my life is ruined. Can you shoot me? Can y'all just shoot me? Right and taken away. Oh my god. I'm an idiot. And he's brought into a room with an investigator from the Harris County Sheriff's Office. How'd he go to the house, Dennis? That was awesome. That was the best day of my life right there. You'll hear more of Scooby-Doo's interview with police later. I never should have said any of that shit. Is this guy on his way here? With men all over the internet admitting they've seen our To Catch a Predator series, we wondered if it would stop a lot of them from trying to hook up with children. Or will there be many others like Scooby-Doo still brazen enough to show up at our house? Come on in. Wait and see. Someone in the driveway. Someone in the driveway. Coming. The team inside Dateline's hidden camera house quickly moves into position. Coming up, driveway, battle stations, battle stations. A man who made a date online for sex with a young girl has shown up earlier than expected. Okay. Our decoy, playing the part of a young girl, heads to the front door to wave the man in. Hey, go on in. He's 32-year-old Christopher Xavier Cannon, here to meet a 15-year-old virgin, at least that's what he was told. Turns out he's a media director at his church, a volunteer position working with young teens, which makes his sexually explicit online chat all the more disturbing. Using the screen name Xavier01, he asks the girl if she's ever had an orgasm. The decoy says, I don't think so, and Xavier01 says, good. Then he asks her, do you want to be on top or bottom? I'm not sure. Which is better? We'll have to see where you fit best, if you know what I mean. Oh, I see. I think I know. <laughs> or we can do doggy style. Sorry, if I don't put this stuff in the washer right away, it just wrinkles. But I made some sweet tea, so just make yourself a glass. Can I use your restroom? Oh, why don't you uh, have a seat real quick? Oh, okay. yeah, I, know this, yeah. I know what this was. I, I just went to test it. That's all. Okay, I know what it is, sir. Thanks. I know what it was. What, what do you think it was? Nothing. He heads out the door, right into the arms of the Harris County Sheriff's Department. Hey! Stop! Stop! Get down! 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 As our investigation continues here in rural Georgia, it becomes clear there are plenty of other men who seem to know about our investigations but show up anyway. Yeah, slowing down, pulling in the driveway. Emily, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Here comes Need a Friend to Talk to 2005. He drove four hours to get here. All right, go ahead and open the door. Hey, come on in. Okay. 
It's raining outside, so I'll meet you in. I just gotta throw this in the dryer real quick. Need a friend to talk to is really 25-year-old John Adam Daniels, a carpenter. He thinks he's here to meet a 13-year-old virgin named Nina. Online, he asks her if she wants to try anal sex and if he can perform oral sex on her. After the decoy agrees, she tells him she's home alone, and he asks to spend the night. He's come prepared. He's brought his overnight bag, it looks like. Sorry, I had to do laundry right away. I had to have something cute to wear tonight. Did you try some of my sweet tea? I see it. Sorry, I'm almost done. Okay, babe. Did you bring me anything? Yes, I did. What did you bring me? I drank in some um, cake cats. Looks like you brought enough stuff to move in. Hey, yes. Why don't you have a seat there? And like some of the others, need a friend to talk to appears to know what he's walked into. Am I being taped? You are being taped. Oh, crap. Am I going to be up be arrested? That's not up to me. You admit right here that you could be in trouble if anybody found out that a 25-year-old yes. was meeting a 13-year-old. Yes, sir. I, I, I thought it was a bad idea to from the beginning, so... But if you thought it was such a bad idea, why did you do it anyway? I know, so... I mean, you started talking, and 45 minutes into the conversation, you say, have you ever seen a man's blank? Meeting? Yes, yes, sir. I'm sorry, so... You ask what size bra she wears. Minutes later, you ask if she would like to move in with you. Yes, sir. What are you thinking here, Al? I'm completely and totally stupid. I'm sorry. Can I? Hey, you, sir. You Just like all the men who show up at our house, he's free to leave. Since he's seen our reports before, he probably knows he won't be free for long. And there's nowhere to run. Get on the ground! Get, get, down, get down on the ground! Get down! 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 down. And the parade continues. Walking up the walk towards the door. Hi, come on in. I now back up, back up, back up. He's right there. Keep going. Here comes another man who, despite seeing our previous broadcasts, is willing to take the risk of showing up at a stranger's house to possibly have sex with a minor. He's 22-year-old Matthew Cogburn. Yesterday was his birthday. He's here to meet a decoy pretending to be a 14-year-old. This clean-cut, all-American-looking man has a MySpace page where he says, Jesus rocks, and lists God as his number one hero. But when he goes into a Yahoo chat room, he seems like another person. His chat with a girl he thinks is 14 is so graphic, much of it can't be shown. He does ask the decoy if her house is secluded, so if they use the jacuzzi, you can moan and squeal all you want. Nice house. Thank you. Did you have a hard time getting here? Well, the road that I was looking for didn't, didn't show up. Why don't you have a seat there and uh, get comfortable for that? I had a feeling this was going to happen. You had a feeling what was going to happen. Go ahead, sit down, please. No, I, I, well, no, this, I need to talk to you about a couple of things, and I think you're going to want to talk about it. It's going to take a few minutes, so why don't you have a seat? Is this going to be on the national on the news? I'm sorry, it'd be on what? Is this the national news thing? NBC? Yeah. You mean like Dateline NBC? Yeah. What was your plan here today? I, I can't answer that as I want to because I've been in a struggle myself with what I want to do because I'm, I'm still a virgin and I think it's stupid that I did this. How old are you? I'm 22. 22. And how old was the girl you were chatting with online? Uh, the girl said she was 13 or 14. 13 or 14. And you thought that it would be okay to come over here and visit a young girl home alone. I wanted to think it was okay, but I just... Now, I'm looking at this chat log here. 16 minutes into this discussion, you ask if she can do deep throat. Explain that to me. No reason to explain it. No reason to explain it. How do you feel about sex? You on birth control? Or are you sticking with condoms? You got toys? Is, is there any... Uh, well, I want you to I, I, square I, that with what's on your MySpace website, where you talk about Jesus rocks. You're going to do this, too. 
you'll hear more about this man's inner struggle after he's in police custody. Get on the ground! Get down on the ground! But there are many more potential sex predators about to keep their date with Dateline. More examples of the potential danger facing children on the internet. The cleanest, best pleasure. The cleanest, best pleasure is to have sex with a 13-year-old girl. Yes, sir. As law enforcement arrests one suspect after another, what happens next is almost inevitable. One of our invited guests drives by, spots them, and takes off. He actually watched it out front and was leaving. But Lieutenant Sven Armburst of the Harris County Sheriff's Office is not about to let 36-year-old George Cleary get away. He actually came by three times. Did he really? Yeah. After Cleary sees this man being arrested, he heads for the highway. That's where detectives stop him. The 36-year-old, who makes his living as a pizza delivery man, drove two hours for the chance to have sex with a 14-year-old he met online. Right have a seat. Using the screen name Broken Empires, he asks the decoy very personal questions, like her bra size and do you shave down there. The decoy says, yeah, a little, because of my bathing suit. Broken Empires says, cool. And when the decoy asks him what kind of girls he likes, he says, small, skinny, beautiful, sexy, and young. He told the decoy he would bring movies, CDs, and condoms. I see you brought condoms. Yes, she asked me to. Intimate lubricant. What's this for? Uh, she was going to give me a massage. Oh. While one man was scared off when he saw police activity, others are wary even when all is quiet. There he is. There he is. This man pulling into our driveway is 38-year-old Peter Seacott, screen name Don Cheech. Online, he goes into graphic detail of how he'd like to perform oral sex on the boy posing as a 14-year-old. The decoy plays along, but Don Cheech repeatedly says he's afraid of getting in trouble. We think we know why. Listen as this female decoy pretending to be Brian talks to Don Cheech on the phone. No, what are you talking about? What's Dateline? What is it? It's like cops or something? I've seen cops, you know. Despite his fears of being caught in our report, the 38-year-old shows up anyway. Come on, get it out of the rain. You're going to get yourself all wet. Dell from Perverted Justice now takes over the role of the boy and tries to convince the man to come inside. But Don Cheech seems very reluctant. Hey, bro! Come on in! Come on, I gotta finish cleaning up the kitchen. I told you to come on in out of the range, you not hear me? He wants to be sure Dell is really the boy he came to see. Pull your head off. He's suspicious. He's living again. Yeah, he's, he's... After Dell refuses to take her hat off, the 38-year-old heads back to his car. That's when law enforcement moves in and arrests him. Put the camera out of my face, please. And as you're about to see, there are more potential predators like Don Cheech who don't stay long. Dell's going to go out and try and get him. He's looking for a black female, so we're trying to pull this out. Meet 43-year-old James Klein, a married man with three children. He's here to meet a girl who told him she was 15. Online, he calls himself Hold You Closer 2003. He asks the girl if she's ever experienced oral sex. The decoy tells him no. And he says, I can tell you one thing, my tongue would be all over you. Your mouth, your nipples, down between your legs too. Now, Hold You Closer 2003 is walking in our house. I gotta throw my laundry in, but I made you tea. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. How you doing? Pretty good. Good. Why don't you have a seat right over there? Did you find the place okay? Huh? Did you find the place okay? No, I didn't. It took you a while. Huh? Did you get lost? I don't know what you're talking about. Why are you here tonight? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about? Uh -uh. He may be able to run away from us, but because Georgia authorities believe his chat log showed intent to have sex with a minor, he's arrested. The next man you're about to meet not only sits down for an interview, he actually admits it's likely he would have taken the virginity of a 13-year-old girl, if she was willing. Hey, I'm up here. 
here. He's 20-year-old Cody Green, screen name Perfect Buddy Georgia. He's been chatting online with a girl posing as a 13-year-old virgin named Maddie Girl 92. He tells the decoy, I definitely appreciate being your first. The decoy says, really? You don't mind I'm a virgin? Perfect Buddy answers, if you don't mind me taking it from you, I actually would love it and never have been with a virgin. Perfect Buddy then sends not one, but eight different pictures of his genitals. The chat lasts for two days. And then he shows up at our house. Yeah, I made some tea and it's on the table. He tries to follow the decoy. Should I have a seat right in that chair? Instead, Please, he sir. runs into me. Please, sir, I really drove this far for no reason. You drove this far for no reason? Yes, sir. I swear Perfect Buddy says he was really just looking for a friend, nothing more. But then his story seems to change. Please, I really, I swear, sir, I'm a desperate person. I need a girl in my life and I'm... If she really wanted to be my friend, that would be all I needed from her. She said she was 13. She did. I'm sorry, sir. I have interest in younger girls. That has just been a fantasy of mine. And a fantasy? Yes, sir. Do you know it violates Georgia law? Yes, sir. Did you say you are ready to have my thang in your mouth? Yes, sir. What do you mean by that? Are you ready to have my in your mouth? Because she was... She was going with it. She was... Oh, so she wanted it. That's what it it's seemed like fault. to me. It's not her fault at all. She made you come over here. I came here for, yes, for reasons like that. But if she really didn't want it, sir, I swear to you, I would have never tried it. But if she was open to the idea... Yes. You would have had sex with a 13-year-old girl. Probably, there. yeah. I'm sorry. I know you think it's bad, but that's what it is. And that would be probably the cleanest... Best pleasure, I would say. The cleanest, best pleasure yes, sir. is to have sex with a 13-year-old girl. Yes, sir. Are you her father or something like that? I'll get to that in a minute. Please tell me this, sir. Am I going to be in trouble for this? Yeah, I want to ask you one more question. You said you had to go see your PO, yes, sir. your parole officer. Yes, sir. What are you on parole for? I got a DUI. Anything else? I got a hit and run charge the other day. A hit and run charge? Yes, sir. So you get a DWI, a hit and run charge. Well, that's something you got to know. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Yes, sir. We're doing stories on adults who try to meet teens on the internet for sex. So what happens to these else? men after they're arrested? On the ground! On the ground! On the ground! On the ground! You'll hear more incredible revelations as the suspects tell their stories to the police. It's like this is so sick. Why did I do this? In chat rooms with young teens, now in the interrogation room with police. When our Dateline net crime to catch a predator continues. Welcome back to our latest investigation into online sex predators. This time we're in rural Harris County, Georgia, and among the law officers on this case, a Secret Service agent. So far we've seen a series of men trying to meet underage teens in internet chat rooms. Now these suspects are under arrest and heading into a police interrogation room. Again, some of what you'll see and hear is explicit. Here's Chris Hansen. It was stupid, I'm a stupid man. That's After Dateline right. confronts a potential sex offender here in rural forts in Georgia... Free to leave. Free to leave. What, what's going to happen? Down on the ground! Down on the ground! Law enforcement working with the online watchdog group Perverted Justice steps in. Put your hands behind your back. Even the U.S. Marshals and Secret Service are involved. Remember Scooby-Doo ATL-01, 23-year-old Dennis Colson? He made plans to teach new sex tricks to a girl he was told was 15. Oh my God, I'm a idiot. After he's arrested, he's put in an unmarked car and taken to this EMS station where he'll be questioned by law enforcement. His car is searched. The police find directions to the house along with condoms and marijuana. Colson is then brought to a room where he waits to be interrogated. That's where he meets Harris County Sheriff Mike Jolly, 
who finds out this isn't Coulson's first run-in with the law. <laughs> I'd like to get out of jail free card. There's no get out of jail free card. No, uh, but from my parents, what I'm saying. Oh, you've already used it one time? I, I, I used it one time. No, it's done now, especially with this. It's over. <laughs> it's what, what over. You've been, what you been picked up for? for? Uh, let's just not talk about it. Well, I mean, we're going to find out. Yeah. Turns work. out Scooby-Doo has had several prior charges. Coulson, he had four prior charges from theft to simple battery, simple assault. Uh, some of these are aggravated type crimes. But he was never convicted. Tonight, he'll have four more charges added to the list. Enticing a child for indecent purposes, obscene internet contact, criminal attempted child molestation, and possession of marijuana. One charge was later dropped. Right. Scooby-Doo is brought into the interrogation room. Oh my God, this was a crime. I can't cry. That's okay. Investigators read Colson his rights. I have to advise you that you, one, have the right to remain silent. And start asking him questions. And what screen name did you use since the 14th of July? Investigator Gary Lewis shows the 23-year-old a copy of the chat he had with a decoy playing a 15-year-old. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, explicit yeah, I definitely shouldn't have said. Yeah. Let's not read that. that. Let's just not read it. I never should have said any of that. Less than five minutes after uh, oh. y'all were communicating, she relayed to you that she was 15 years old. I'm yeah. curious as to why you continued the conversation. Because I'm retarded. You're retarded. Because I'm retarded. Because I'm so I was bored as and I was just looking for conversation and you know, I was conversating. I'm not, I'm not trying to clear it up. I still, I, I, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's bad. I mean, why would you ask a 15-year-old girl I think we need if to she's still a virgin? I think we should go ahead and stop. Scooby-Doo ends the interview pretty quickly. My name's Tony. I work with the Sheriff's Office and this is Teresa. But Sheriff's investigators like Tony Knotts and a Secret Service agent disguised because of her undercover work have others to question. Basically, you've been caught in a sting, sting operation, of course. That's why you're in handcuffs. Christopher Cannon is the 32-year-old volunteer church director who mentioned several sexual positions he'd like to try with a girl posing as a 15-year-old. He's the one who ran as soon as he saw me. Oh, why don't you uh, have a seat real quick? Oh, yeah, I know what this is. No, please, I need you. Yeah, I know what this was. I, don't, I just went to test it, that's all. Okay. But that's not what he tells investigators. It's funny, when I saw this on Dateline yeah. a few months ago, or whatever. You show up in the middle of it. Yes, I'm like, that is so sick. Why did I do this? The investigator reminds him he'd been chatting online with the decoy for more than a week, and many times the chat turned sexual. I mean, just playing around with her, but not my, my intention wasn't to do it. I even wanted to reject it. Yeah, but you drove 115 miles. I know it. I kept saying to myself, why am I coming out of here? Why, what are you doing? What are you doing? Turn around, turn around. Trust me, I wanted to turn around. Help me understand, because I'm, I'm kind of lost when you say that you, you didn't want to come, but I, you're here. Part of me was like, you know, just turn around. And part of me was like, you know, it's the first weekend you had to yourself. Just go out there, you know, hang out a little bit. Don't do anything silly. Well, why would you even have a, a sexual conversation with a, with a 15-year-old? I really tried to avoid her when it first met her. Um, every time I get online, you know, she initiate the conversation. And you said you didn't initiate the conversation, but actually you did. You the first she never talked to you. You said hello, Natalie, because you saw her yeah. in a chat room. Yeah. And how are you doing today? That was the first initiation on your part. Yeah, yeah, the initiate. Yeah, just chatting. You she asked her if, if she's horny now, and then you asked her if she's wet now. Why would you care if a fifteen-year-old is wet? Stupidity, man. I mean, I don't know why. It's just when you tell her you'll be gentle. What are you referring to when you're talking about being gentle? Just being with her, nothing sexually touching her and all that. Chris, Chris, we don't, we, we've been doing this too just, long. Yeah, just. I, I understand. Mean, I understand. Y'all go through. I, I just saw you do the sign of the cross, so I know you're uh, you're probably a religious man. I'm about to. <laughs> and you would probably feel better if you. If it came, never happened. Came, yeah, never happened. She opened the door. Said, "Come on in." Another man who probably wishes what? it never happened was someone who also ran from us. Some more questions for you, sir. But did talk to police. Get on the ground! 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 Remember 43 year old Jim Klein? Online, he made plans to lick a 15 year old all over. He admits to investigators he's been married for 20 years and has three children, ages 11, 13, and 15. How would you feel if this was your 15 year old or your 11 year old or your 13 year old? How would you feel? I'd feel awful. 
That's it, just awful? No, I mean, no, I mean. I mean, you were pretty much down here tonight, 100 miles away from home, to do what you were gonna do and damage this child's mind for the rest of her life. Sex, maybe sex to you, but to this child, 15, she's gotta live with this for the rest of her life. And Klein actually does admit he was planning on staying the night. I was gonna leave tomorrow morning. Where were you gonna stay at? Uh, she said I could stay there. She said the house it was, says it was a big house. Where were you going to sleep at? Did y'all discuss any of those options there? No. And you brought four movies and you arrived at 9.30 at night? Yes. You going to stay up all night watching movies? Yeah. I mean, you know, if she wanted to watch all four, we would have watched all four. Would you have done anything else if she wanted to do anything else? Um, you know, it was talked about. Klein says he had two glasses of wine before he started chatting online, and it clouded his judgment. But that doesn't explain why he showed up the next day, apparently stone-cold sober. I was seriously considering not even coming down here, and I was just saying, you know, I, I, just don't, I just don't feel comfortable about this. I don't feel good about this. I just don't think it's a good idea. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! This man also realizes it wasn't a good idea. He's the religious 22-year-old who said he was conflicted about meeting a 14-year-old after a sexually graphic online chat. I've been in a, I don't say a mental struggle, but I'm still a virgin and I'm having, I've been having trouble. He tells investigators that this isn't the first time he's gone to visit someone he met online. In fact, he says he met his last girlfriend on MySpace. We dated for five and a half months, but it was nothing sexual, nothing, you know, just good, clean relationship. And she wasn't the only one. I have met girls before, but I haven't done anything. Mm -hmm, I just, mm -hmm. I couldn't, just because of my spirituality, and I didn't solely deep down and have any intentions to do anything. I've been able to talk the way I've talked and this is my punishment. And his punishment, like the other men caught in this investigation, begins when they are taken in a van to the county jail. And turn your head to your left. Where they are photographed. Press down. Fingerprinted. Hey kids, don't f up. <laughs> it's a bad idea. And put behind bars awaiting a bond hearing. Most of the men have to wait 48 hours in jail until the judge will see them. His bond would then be set at 25000 While most of the men say they would not have had sex with a minor, none have had a chance to enter a plea. So far, you've met seven men who showed up at our undercover house. And despite go. all our previous investigations, there are more on the way and you won't want to miss their stories. And watch what happens when this man tries to run from police. South, south, guys. It was a to catch a predator first. This man made plans online for a threesome with an underage teen and his adult girlfriend. You're ready. You can hear me? Okay, great. 35-year-old Marvin Smith, being waved into our house by a decoy, said he and his girlfriend wanted to have sex with a girl who told them she was a 15-year-old virgin. Come on in. Come on, I'm just going to finish getting ready. Right. Give me like a couple minutes. <laughs> Online, he calls himself Southwest Georgia Male Yes. His chat is one of the most graphic and disturbing we've come across. At first, he offers the decoy, Aaron Lynn B., $250. When she asks, why do you want to give me money? He says, because I want you. Then he tells her about another girl he met online. She was 15, like you. Her mom was at work. Okay. She invited me over. Had never had sex. Oh. Her and her friend. He goes on to say that the two girls performed oral sex on him, and then he describes in detail how he claims to have taken one of the girls' virginity. And he doesn't stop there. After he sends pornography, he then introduces the decoy to a woman who calls herself Phyllis, his girlfriend, and says she wants to be there with us. 
Phyllis then apparently gets on the computer herself and starts chatting with Aaron Lynn B and explains how it would work. She says her boyfriend would have sex with both of us. As he's doing one of us, he would want us to play with each other. To verify Phyllis was real, a decoy from Perverted Justice spoke to her on the phone. Phil, how are you? I'm from Karen. Phyllis, the girlfriend, doesn't show up. She apparently had to work. But Southwest Georgia male, yes, does, and is now in our house and in hot pursuit of our decoy. I had a good chance to get a hug. Have a seat. But as the decoy walks behind the curtain, the man sees our camera crew and runs. He saw Ron. He's coming out. He's coming out. And he keeps on running, even after sheriff's deputies order him to stop. Finally, an officer's taser knocks him to the ground. After he's arrested, he's taken in for questioning. This man with the incredibly vulgar chat reveals something that, ironically, no longer surprises us. I was a man in the shirt. <laughs> what church you go to? My, my dad was a preacher in the Baptist shirt. I don't want to go to prison. It also turns out he's married and worried about his wife finding out. Mr. Geary. Yes, what is that? Hmm? My lose everything I got. Do what? My lose everything I have, Mr. Gay. The 35-year-old asks to speak to a lawyer, and the interview is over. He's then taken to the county jail, fingerprinted, photographed, and put behind bars. Is Marvin Harrison Smith your true name? Yes, sir. The next day, he goes before a judge, and bail is set. All right, that's a total of 35000 Back at the house, there are more suspected predators on the way. This man pulling into our driveway is 38-year-old David Hilbish. He builds tunnels. In the chat, he had uh, mentions uh, molesting another 15-year-old. He's been chatting with a decoy, pretending to be 14. He says he'd rather not come to her home. He'd like to take her to a hotel. Emily, wave him in. Here he comes. Good job. Good job. We got him coming. Online, using the screen name Tunnels12000, he tells the decoy named Tracy in Excess this isn't his first time meeting a teen on the Internet. I did it with a 15-year-old before, and I came real close to getting caught. I didn't have sex with her, everything but. He later says he was questioned by detectives, but never charged. Now, he wants to have sex with Tracy. I want all of you, Tracy, in every way. You show me, okay? Hey! Come on in. I made you some sweet tea. Oh, well, I just gotta throw this in the dryer real quick or everything's gonna get up. Wrinkle. Okay, this will only take a second. <laughs> I'm sorry you couldn't bring your bike. I would have loved to see it. Do you have a seat right over there, please? Yeah. How you doing? Pretty good. When I confront the 38-year-old, his memory seems a bit foggy. And so you were chatting with a girl named Tracy. Right. And how old is Tracy? I don't have no idea. The problem for you, David, is that I have the chat right here. How old are yeah, you again? Not sure if I read that right. 14. She says she's 14 right here, right? I guess so. So what you said before was not true. Correct. Okay. Have you ever done this before? No. Have you ever been with an underage girl before? No, not sexually, no. I did it with a 15-year-old before, and I came real close to being caught. Right. We stay out all night and fall asleep in my oh, truck. I didn't break the law that I knew of, and the police officer told me that. And, and why? I don't know what the law is, but he didn't. He questioned me. I went back home that night, and he called me Monday. When I read him some of what he wrote in his chat log, he first tries to blame the girl. I would do it in a minute with you, hoping I would stay out of jail. You ask her if she likes oral sex. And she asked me several things also. Does that make it right? No, and she invited me here. So because a 14-year-old girl invites you to come over, it's okay for her? I don't for a... right. It's wrong. I admit I'm wrong. Why did you do it? There is no reason. I'd want to stay all night. Did you bring uh, any alcohol with you? Yeah. Yeah. And what did you bring exactly? 
exactly what she asked. When I asked him what his plan was here tonight, he says he's so not really sure. If this 14-year-old girl was willing to have sex with you, would you have had sex with her? I can't say for sure. I never did with that other girl, and that's the reason why. That's the reason why why? She was underage. Aren't there any girls or women of, of uh, legal age that you can date? I, mean, I what? have a fiancé. Huh? I have a fiancé. You have a fiancé. And how do you suppose this is going to play when she finds out about this? It's not going to play at all. Now it's time to tell Tunnels 12,000 what he's walked into. I need to tell you that I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and, and we're doing a story on adults who meet teens online and then try to meet them in person for sex. If there's anything else you want to tell us about I this really situation... Not, I, mean, uh, you know, I can't understand how y'all legally been able to do this. Oh, we can. Okay. Now, then he says he'd like to say something more. I just need to uh, stay off the internet, maybe. He says he's not a predator. He's a lonely man raising two children alone who uses the internet to meet women. A predator is somebody that constantly does that. I don't do that. I would prefer to have someone my age that would prefer to have me. But if some female offer, makes an offer to you and you're lonely already, it's tempting for a person. What made this so tempting for you? Being lonely. Anything else you'd like to tell us? No. Are y'all going to get me arrested when I leave? Had he seen our previous reports, he would know exactly what's going to happen next. Sheriff's office, get on the ground! Get on the ground now! Get out! Get on the ground! Lay down! Lay down! And an update on one of the most shocking men caught in our To Catch a Predator series, a rabbi. Tonight? We'll see. <laughs> so how can I help you? In August 2005, 54-year-old David Kay was caught in one of our To Catch a Predator investigations trying to meet a 13-year-old boy for sex. Turns out Kay was a rabbi. You know I'm in trouble, and I know I'm in trouble. Kay was convicted and recently sentenced to six and a half years in prison and ten years of supervised release. The judge gave him a harsh sentence in part because he thought Kay lied at his trial. What was your plan here just today in this house? Hang out and whatever, sir. Hang out and whatever. I don't know. I mean, nothing was really going to happen or nothing. I mean, hey. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Hands out. Hands out. Next week, our investigation in Harris County, Georgia, continues. Whoa. You're a mature guy with a very successful career in the military. Yes, sir. What is a guy like you doing online chatting with somebody who's 14 just, years old? I was just fooling around. You'll hear more from this soldier and many other men who show up at our house hoping to meet a young teen home alone. Come on in, have a Good. So how can a parent protect a child from an internet predator? You'll find a complete online safety guide on our website, including advice on how to talk to your kids and how to monitor their internet use. Just log on to dateline.msnbc.com. That's all for now. I'm Stone Phillips for Ann Curry and all of us at NBC News. Thanks for watching. A 24-year-old with a 15-year-old as jailbait. And jail is exactly where he's going. Coast to coast, Dateline launches more undercover stings. Get on the ground now! Hand behind your back. Get down! More than 80 suspected predators caught by our cameras and by police. You know who I am. You're on the Dateline show. They may know who we are, but what's shocking is they still come knocking. Does your boss know that you are online chatting with the See, I'm girl? sure they don't. You say to her, I can't control my horny level. You're talking about taking her virginity. Tonight, three military men are at the door. What's really sad is this could cost you a military career. I know that. Beware our man behind that curtain. Chris Hansen with a hidden camera investigation. I believe that we would have had some young child sexually abused. No doubt in my mind. A Dateline net crime to catch a predator.
Thanks for joining us. I'm Stone Phillips. And I'm Ann Curry. In community after community, vulnerable young teenagers are still at risk from grown men online. Now our hidden cameras are in Georgia. And among the suspected predators caught on tape, three military men. Two served in Iraq, but could they now be serving time in prison? Chris Hansen has our latest investigation, and again, we want to warn you that some of it is explicit. She said she was 13. She did. I'm sorry, sir. I have interest in younger girls. That has just been a fantasy of mine. A fantasy? Yes, sir. Do you know it violates Georgia law? Yes, sir. Go on in. So even when men know it's against the law... Are you going to arrest me or what? Get on the ground! On the ground now! No, there's a chance they'll be apprehended. Am I being taped? You are being taped. Oh, crap. And know all about Dateline's previous reports oh, on internet actually, sex predators. Yeah, I know what this is. Oh, no, please, I need you. Yeah, I know what this was. I, I just went to test it. That's all. They still show up at a house where they were told a child is home alone and willing to have sex with them. And the number of men who continue to arrive at the door during each undercover operation is alarming. All right, this is true sweet guy, true sweet guy. Like our latest investigation, the sixth one, this time in Harris County, Georgia. Emily, open the door and call. We've rigged this house with 12 hidden cameras, five inside and seven outside. Which camera you want to lose? From a control room inside the house, a crew operates the cameras and records a man's every move from the moment he drives up to the house. We've hired a young-looking 19-year-old to play the part of a young girl, a decoy who will invite the men in. Hey! What's up? Come on in! This is 24-year-old Raimundo Anguiano. He thinks he's here to see a 14-year-old girl named Diane. He met her online just hours ago in an AOL chat room. Yeah, I made some sweet tea for you if you want a glass. It's super good. It's what we do down south. <laughs> I'll be right back. To give you an idea why he might be here, take a look at what he said online. Using the screen name True Sweet Guy 69, he asks a decoy, an adult pretending to be 14, if she's good at giving oral sex. The decoy says, nobody ever complained. Didn't do it lots, but I know how to do it. Then True Sweet Guy 69 asks if he shows the girl a picture of his penis, would she give him oral sex? The decoy, who he thinks is 14, says, oh yeah. And sure enough, True Sweet Guy 69 sends her a picture of his genitals. How you doing? Why don't you have a seat right over there? What are you doing here? Well, I just, we were talking online and I just wanted to come and meet her. And who were you talking online with? With that young lady there, sir? The young lady? Yes, sir. Okay, he wants uh, the decoy to meet her at the car. He was really talking online with a different decoy, a member of the online watchdog group Perverted Justice, which Dateline hired to do what they normally do, go into chat rooms and set up computer profiles pretending to be young teens who are interested in sex. And sometimes, as in the case of True Sweet Guy 69, the decoy says she is sexually experienced. And how old is that young lady? She said she was 14, sir. 14. And how old are you? <sighs> 24, sir. 24? Yes. And you thought that was appropriate. Why? Well, I don't know, sir. I mean, I just thought it was, it was all right. I mean. Then I asked him about the picture of his genitals he sent to the girl posing as a young teen. Now, when you were online, mm -hmm. you sent this picture. Yes, sir. You did? Yeah, I'm not going to deny that. Right. Now, you know that's against the law, right? Yes, sir, it is. You just get into these chat rooms and stuff, and, you know, you just chat away. Do you send pictures like that very often? No. Just, if, you know, just only if I'm really serious about talking to somebody or something. But other than that, no. Well, Ray, what do you think would have happened if I wasn't here mm -hmm. and a 14-year-old girl was here home alone? Well, if whatever was going to happen was going to happen. If wasn't nothing was going to happen, then, hey... So if she was willing to have sex with you, you would have had sex with her? No. Even I though, would still have second thoughts. Second thoughts. Yes, sir. But, yeah, I've seen this show about three times on TV. Already. You've seen this show? Yes, sir. So you know exactly what's going on here? Yeah. You know who I am? Mm-hmm. You heard right. This man's aware of our previous investigations. You're on the Dateline show. Exactly. Yes, I know who you are. I'm Chris Hansen. Yeah, there we go, yeah. Now, did you, did you think at all that maybe you were walking in to, to catch a predator? It was, and you know, that kind of crossed my mind yeah, for, a minute, crossed I mean, mind. for a minute. for a minute, you yeah. know. And then I just, just wiped it away, you know. So you wiped it away. 
Do you think it was a good show? No, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was supposed to stop people and things like that, you know? Well, this is the part where usually I say, I'm Chris Hansen with Daily yeah, NBC, yeah, yeah. right? Okay, you remember that part? Yes, I remember. And then you remember it. when these guys come out, the yeah. cameras come out, right? Mm -hmm. And then I say, if there's anything else you'd like to tell us, no, that's we'd it. like to hear it. Otherwise, you're obviously free to walk out the door you okay. came in. And like the other men he's seen in our reports, True Sweet Guy 69 probably knows he's about to face yet another confrontation. Get on the ground. On here, Get on the ground. Now. On your face. On your face. Get out. Perverted Justice has been sending all the sexually explicit online chat logs between its decoys and the potential predators to the Harris County Sheriff's Department. All right, so here's the updated logs. In Georgia, it's a crime to attempt to solicit sex online with a minor. And law enforcement says showing up at this house makes a case even stronger. So true sweet guy 69 is arrested. Put in an unmarked car and taken in for questioning. I'm just choosing my right to remain silent. Okay. After that, he's transported to the county jail where he's fingerprinted, photographed, now to the left. and locked up. The next day, he goes before a judge, and his bail is set. Uh, the criminal attempt child molestation is 15000 And as you'll see, there are many more men about to go down the same road, from our undercover house to the courthouse, and all the stops in between. Coming up, we've never seen this, a suspect with something very specific in mind. Now, this is the fetish guy with the boots. You talk about taking her out and buying her some boots. Yeah. What's up with that? When To Catch a Predator continues. You're going to push that open, you're going to haul her out. We've hired this young-looking 19-year-old named Amanda to play the part of an underage girl home alone. And you come around here. She gets into position, standing by the front door as a potential predator shows up at our undercover house. Come on in, I'm just finishing up getting out of the shower. 37-year-old Todd West has no problem following our decoy right into the house. He's here to meet a girl who online told him she was a 14-year-old virgin. Using a screen name we can't show on TV, he chants on and off with the decoy named Mystic Roses for a week. Then he decides to turn on his webcam and send the girl a live picture of his penis. Come on in. After they set up a plan for him to come over, the decoy asks if he'll bring condoms and Jack Daniels. So did he? Nice dick. Did you bring the Jack Daniels? Yep. You did? Mm-hmm. Yay. Did you pick up the condoms? Mm-hmm. He seems at ease with her, even though he's in a strange house talking to someone he's never met in person before. Do you have any special ideas for tonight or anything? Not special. What are some of your ideas? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. More about him a little later. This next man heading into the house just made a stop at a gas station down the road. As you can see from this security camera video, he bought condoms before coming over to meet a girl he thinks is a 13-year-old virgin. Come on in. I'm just finishing getting ready. You didn't have to get take a shower. Well... He's 37-year-old William Rowell, a service tech for coin-operated machines. Also known as Baron Wolfsfur, he's talking to a decoy named Sassy Little Lady. He tells the girl, you know that I really want to make love to you, but I want to hold you close to me. The decoy says, I want that too. Later, using a different screen name, Wolf Knight 30, he tells the decoy he's worried because of the Dateline shows of late. The decoy, responding like a 13-year-old, says, what's Dateline? She pretends not to know about the show to see if a man apparently aware of our investigation would still take the risk and show up. He explains to her it's a show on NBC. They have been doing a lot of shows about internet predators, but that isn't enough to scare him away. Well, that ruined the surprise. Actually, I'd rather for you to come. Oh, sir. Sir, I need uh, to talk to you a minute. No. I don't get the chance to speak with him or Todd West, the first man in the door. But the team from the Harris County Sheriff's Office will. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Now! 
Hands behind your back. Get, Get down! down. Get right. right. now! After he's read his rights, 37-year-old West chooses to remain silent. Can I have a lawyer present? Yeah, sure. No, I'm saying this is being recorded. Yeah. But Baron Wolfsfer talks at length with Chief Rhett Wade and Investigator Tony Knox. Who are you here to meet tonight? Brooke. Her name was Brooke. Right. How old is Brooke? Brooke says she was 13. Okay. Was my intention to have sex with her? No. Did you uh, stop down here at the Chevron gas station and purchase condoms? Yes, right, but my intentions were because she asked me to bring condoms. I had the condoms just in case, but I, my intentions were not to have sex. We only buy condoms for one thing. To have sex, I know. So that's why I'm being charged with being a pedophile. He's not being charged as a pedophile. That would be sex with a much younger child. Instead, he'll face criminal attempt to commit child molestation. I think you think me and Corporal Knott's here or acting like you'd come down here and, and try to have sex with someone yes. who's not consenting. And that's not what we're talking about at all. We know good and well you wouldn't have forced yourself on Brooke. My intentions were not to have sex, but if the opportunity was there, then yeah. But I, my intentions were not to go that route. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I feel like I'm being tricked. After the interview, Raul is taken to the Harris County Jail. He's still in custody today, unable to make bail. Now this is the fetish guy with the boots. Meanwhile, back at the house, Amanda, our decoy, is in place ready to invite our next guest inside. All right, Amanda, this guy should be bringing riding boots for you to wear. Using the screen name Gerald White 30627, this 31-year-old starts chatting with a girl posing as a 15-year-old. He asks the decoy if she wears boots. The girl responds, I wish I had some tall ones. Then Gerald White 30627 says, perhaps we could go boot shopping. The decoy types, wow, you mean for like the big ones? Then he cuts to the chase and says, I'm not going to avoid the subject. I would like to make love to you after we are done boot shopping. I have a serious fetish for boots. Gerald White later tells the decoy he's going to bring her a pair of boots. But as he comes in the house, he's not carrying any. Ugh. I just gotta get these clothes out so they don't wrinkle. Ugh. Did you bring the riding boots? Yes. All right. Out in the car. I can't wait to get my own pair. So you have a little shopping uh, day planned this afternoon? Uh, yep. Yeah. And who are you taking shopping today? Uh, Natasha. Natasha. Yes. And how did you meet Natasha? Met her online. Online. Yes. And how old do you think Natasha is? I have no idea. You have no idea? No. We never discussed it. You never discussed it. To refresh his memory, I read to him from his chat log. I'm 15. I, I, you don't have to go any further. I understand. You talk about taking her out and buying her some boots. Yeah. What's up with that? It's just... Just shopping, period. Shopping. That's it. So you just found a 15-year-old girl online, decided you're going to buy her a pair of uh, leather boots that you want her to wear 24 hours a day, you said right here. What was your plan here today? No, no plan whatsoever. No just plan whatsoever. And, just coming to talk and everything. I, obviously, I need... As the 31-year-old heads for the door, law enforcement moves into place, ready to take the man down as soon as he walks outside. Police arrest him and lead him away, clearing the front of the house so more suspects are free to come in. Coming up, the Air Force, the Army, the National Guard. Three military men come knocking at the door. Married looking for fun, that's you, right? And a confrontation brings one of them to his knees when the catch a predator continues. Welcome back to our sixth investigation into online sex predators. This time we're in Harris County, a rural part of Georgia. And sad to say, among the surprises at the door are three military men, one formerly in the Air Force and two others who recently served in Iraq. Now they're under arrest and in the interrogation room with police. Again, Chris Hansen. There he is. Oh, oh, oh. he's coming in. 
Whether near a big city or a rural area like Harris County, Georgia, lines of potential predators find their way to our undercover houses. Meet 24-year-old Brian Lindsay, here because he was invited by a girl who said online she was 15. I got through my clothes and wash, okay? I made you some tea, though. Using the screen name B. Lindsay 01, he describes how he wants to give the girl oral sex. He says, I can't control my horny level. Then he says, I want to blank your brains out. I can't help it. Now he's driven two and a half hours to meet her. Have some tea if you want some. It's sweet tea. Is that okay? Yeah, I already drank some on the way. Did you find the place okay? Yes, sir. Why don't you have a seat right over there, please? <clears throat> what are you up to tonight? Just driving around. Just driving around? Yes, sir. And why is he just driving around? He says he's been away from Georgia for two years while serving in the United States Air Force, and he wanted to learn his way around again. How is that lesson going for you tonight so far? Not too good. Then he comes up with a completely different excuse. What made you drive into this driveway and walk into this house? I'm just asking for directions like... Oh, so you're lost? Yes, sir. But he drops that story as soon as I read to him from his chat log. I take it you're a virgin? No, sir. Not you. I'm reading from the conversation between you and Natasha. You say to her, I take it you're a virgin. She says no, but I'm no ho. You talk about oral sex in great detail. How you like to do it. Honestly, my intention was not to do anything like that because... Hey, I know. It's jailbait. Jailbait. 24-year-old with a 15-year-old, that's jailbait. However, I do believe you can be friends with a 15-year-old and maybe go out and go bowling or something like that. But that's not what you talk about here. You don't talk about going out bowling or just hanging out or mentoring this 15-year-old girl. You talk about having sex with her in great detail. I will get on there and I will speak inappropriate. Sometimes people will just talk about that if you were here right now and wanted to i would not deny you i want to blank your brains out yeah, there, i can't help it there is I mean, is there any other meaning for that there's a difference though between wanting to and actually doing it it sounds like you sure wanted to based upon this i can't control my horny level you see during the conversation you just masturbated twice and it hasn't helped and i was lying you were lying then or you're lying now i was lying then I mean, granted, yes, it's my fault, but did I actually fall into a trap? Well, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to meet teens on the Internet and then try to meet them. Yes, sir. Now, everything you've just said has been recorded with our hidden cameras from the moment you pulled into the driveway. All I explained was I uh, did not come here with the intention of having sex. I came here with the intention of hanging out. Doing, you know, talking a little bit, maybe go bowling, maybe she's in pool or something. Well, Brian, what should happen to you? Well, honestly, uh, with this, I think I should just be able, just be allowed to just go home. Like nothing ever happened? No, sir. Go home. Just take it as a lesson learned. Not to do it again. No such luck. Like all the other men who show up at this house, he gets arrested. While this former military man talked even after he knew he was being recorded, the next man, currently a soldier, doesn't stay long enough to find out he's on national television. Man, I just gotta put this in the washer. Come on. Okay. He's 27-year-old Marshal Gertman, a first lieutenant in the National Guard who served a year in Iraq. He's been chatting with a decoy posing as a 15-year-old. Using the screen name High Excitement, he sends the girl a link for her to view pornographic pictures and asks her, what do you think? And then asks, do you like it? Later, he makes plans to come over and go skinny dipping. Hey, just have a seat. If I don't put this stuff in right away, it gets all wrinkled. Okay. You can just take a seat. I'll be right there. I hate laundry. As he's walking in, he seems to spot our crew. He's leaving. And takes off. Cheers, officer. Keep your hands yes, up. Sir. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. There. Yes, sir. Do not move. While he never tells us his side of the story, as we'll hear later, he speaks at length to investigators. I mean, you brought up the, the fact of, of going skinny dipping in the, in the swimming pool yes, with a 15-year-old girl. Yes, sir. Back at the house, here comes another soldier, an Army staff sergeant who served a tour in Iraq, 33-year-old Rolando Restacruz. Hey, come on in. 
Online, he calls himself married and looking for fun, 31313. He's been chatting for three weeks with Bedhead Red, a decoy who told him she was a 14-year-old virgin. He tells the girl when he first gets to her house, they can take a shower together. I will undress you, and you will undress me, okay? The decoy says, okay. Then he says, I will have to get some lubricant, too. For a virgin to have sex, it hurts, so it's better if I put some extra lubricant. He also promises to bring her beer, a webcam, and sexy lingerie. But as he walks into the house, he doesn't appear to be carrying any presents. Could they be in his truck? More on that later. I made some sweet tea. It's on the table. I just got to put this stuff in the washer real quick. A little iced tea? Oh, how you doing, sir? Good. How much have a seat? What are you doing here today? Sir, I wasn't going to do anything. I swear. You weren't going to do no. anything? No. Well, who were you here to see? I was going to meet her. Let's see. Meet who? Your daughter. My daughter? Yes. What Let's makes see. you think it's my daughter? He never answers that question. Instead, he says... Sir, I don't want you to destroy my life. Well, you made the decision to walk in here. I know, sir, but I wasn't going to do anything, I swear. That's not what it sounds like in this chat log. Yes, I was just fooling around, sir. Damn, you're very sexy. You have a boyfriend? I know, sir. Sorry. Sorry, please. So you ever been with an old guy before? No, I need you to stay in the, the chair, yes, please. Sir. Sit down, please. Please, sir. He refuses to sit in the chair. To be Mary certain we have the right fun. man, I ask him about the chat log. Married looking for fun, that's you, right? Yes, sir. For a virgin to have sex, it hurts, so it's better if I put some extra lubricant. I wasn't going to do anything, I swear. I was going to just tell you that I cannot do it. Well, that's not consistent with what's here, page after page after page. I was coming straight up. You were going to tell her what? That all this sex talk was just play no, and... That I wasn't going to do it. I have a daughter. She's my stepdaughter. How old is she? 17. What do you think your stepdaughter would think about this? Oh, she will kill me. Your ex-wife, what does she think about this? She will kill me too. While on his knees, the 33-year-old appears to try to bargain with us. I would not never do it again, never. I swear, just don't destroy my career. I'm going to get counseling, I swear. Counseling? Yes. Do you often chat with teenage girls on the internet? No, it was the first time. Why even enter into this discussion with somebody who says they're 14? Sir, please. On his knees, he seems a sad character. But this is the same man who chatted online for more than three weeks, typing well over 50 pages of chat log, saying things to a girl he thought was 14, like, remember, sex is a little nasty. I don't want your dad to find stuff in his bed. Rolando, what should happen to you? I don't know. I mean... Oh, my God. Don't you see something wrong with a, a grown adult, a sergeant in the army... Coming over to meet a 14-year-old girl. I will get counseling, sir, I swear. Why should I believe that? I promise you, with my life. But what happens to him legally is not up to me. His sexual online chat with someone he thought was 14 is enough to get him charged with a felony. Do you ever watch television? Yes, sir. Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? Yeah, about the cops and everything. I know. Do you ever see the, the Catch a Predator show? Yes, I'm not a predator, sir, I I'm, swear. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story. Oh, my God. Now, if there's anything else you'd like to say... <laughs> sir, please. ...we'd like to hear it, otherwise you're free to walk right out of this house. No, sir, can I go? Yes, absolutely. The soldier is free to leave, but remains kneeling, perhaps because he knows what will happen next. Eventually, he gets up and, with his head hanging low, heads for the front door. But he's not on his feet for long. The tears keep flowing as the police arrest him, but his sob story may seem less convincing once we show you what the police find in his truck. Gifts he brought for a 14-year-old. Astroglide, is that some kind of sexual lubricant? Yes, sir. You brought that with you? Yes, sir. How about panties and a camisole? Yes, sir. And what about the other soldier who served time in Iraq? Things get tough for him inside the interrogation room. We provided a 15-year-old child with a pornographic website. Yes, sir. So this could cost you a military career. When the Catch a Predator continues.
I'm Chief Wade with Harris County Sheriff's Department. Your name is Rolando Restacruz. Yes, sir. Rolando is the 33-year-old Army Staff Sergeant who kneeled in our kitchen and told a sob story. But if he never intended to do anything wrong, how would he explain what investigators find in his truck? Is all this stuff in the vehicle? Yes, sir. How about Trojan? Is that Trojan condom? Yes, sir. So you brought condoms with you? Yes, sir. How about Astroglide? Is that some kind of sexual lubricant? Yes, sir. You brought that with you? How about panties and a camisole? Yes, sir. The webcam? Did you buy the webcam? Yes, sir. Why did you bring it with you? Because I promised her that I was going to give her one. It was all there in the chat logs that perverted justice provided to law enforcement. Remember, his screen name is Married and Looking for Fun 31313. Does the screen name Bedhead Red 14 ring a bell with you? That's Whitney. That's Whitney? And Whitney, you believe to be a 14 year old girl, correct? Yes, sir. Yesterday, around 6.56, you told her after some chat, I want you in my chest after we do it all night sleeping together. Is that you? And you say, I love you, baby. And then you say, I want to be your loving husband forever. And you're nodding your head yes? Okay. Down a little bit further, Married and Looking for Fun says, we will have to hide your real age. You remember typing that? And you're nodding your head yes? Okay. He doesn't deny a thing. Investigators complete the interrogation and the soldier is taken to the county jail. Look to your left for me. Where officers take his mugshot, fingerprints, and place him in a cell. Two days later, Rolanda Restacruz, he goes before a judge. Mr. Restacruz, you're charged with criminal attempt child molestation. It's a felony. It carries a penalty of 1 to 20 years. And bail is set. All right, on the criminal attempt child molestation, I'm going to set a $15,000 bond. He wasn't the only military man caught in our sting, but this other soldier's memory isn't as clear. Remember First Lieutenant Marshall Gertman? He made plans to meet a girl he thought was 15. Honestly, I, I couldn't remember her age. She only told me that one time. I knew she was probably underage just by the way we were talking. Um, bad judgment call and bad judgment call to keep talking to her. Well, you know, First Lieutenants don't make bad judgment calls. Hey. Not always. Not, not always. But he insists he had no plans for sex with the young teen. Honestly, no, I would never let myself do that. Well, you let yourself, you let yourself internet chat with a 15-year-old. Yes, sir, I know. You let yourself come over to a house where there was only a 15-year-old in it. Yes, sir, I know. And you expect me to believe that you didn't expect to get laid while you were here? Sir, no, I don't expect you to believe it, no. But knowing myself, no, I wouldn't let it go that far that I sent, sir. He did allow himself to send a girl he thought was underage a link to a pornographic website. So he provided a 15-year-old child with a pornographic website that she could go to? Yes, sir. Why would you do that? I don't really have a good explanation of why. What's really sad, Marshall, is this could cost you a military career. I know that, sir. He's taken away and processed like all the other men caught in our investigation. A total of 20 men showed up at our house in Fortson, Georgia. All 20 were arrested and booked by Harris County Sheriff Mike Jolly and his team. What do you think would have happened had there in fact been a young teenager home alone and had Dateline and the Harris County Sheriff's Department not been there? Uh, I believe that we would have had uh, some young child uh, sexually abused. No doubt in my mind. And there are other adults seemingly on the prowl for sex with a minor. This man shows up in his big rig. Hey, you made it. I'll be back in just a second. And this one, a director at a computer hey. software company, is playing hooky from work so he can meet a 13-year-old home alone. <laughs> Sit down, make yourself at home. Sure, thank you. I'm just getting these out so I don't get wrinkled. All right. He seems so friendly and polite, that manager at a software company, but his online chat tells a different story. You know, sex with a minor is called rape. Right, I understand. When To Catch a Predator continues. All right, Amanda, a tractor trailer coming down the road. Get ready. You can probably guess what this next suspected sex predator does for a living. All right, he's here. Let him turn off the engine. He won't be able to hear anything until he cuts the engine. 
Let's let him get down. He's a 41-year-old truck driver from Fayetteville, Georgia, Joseph Myrick. He thinks a 15-year-old girl is inside, ready to have sex with him. Hey, you made it. Come on in. I'm just getting some laundry out. Okay. His screen name is too graphic to use, but in his chat, he asks the decoy, when it comes to sex, are there any positions you like best? The person pretending to be the 15-year-old says, I only did the one. Then he says, well, we'll try others. When the decoy says it's awesome that he's bringing the big truck, he says, well, I do not want your mom finding out because it would mess up a good thing. That's a big truck you got. How do you drive that thing? Yeah, I mean, I really like driving a car. Well, I would love to go for a ride sometime. Well, I'd, I'd love to take you. Where exactly were you going to uh, take her in that truck of yours? Well, I was going to take her around, you know, see, you know, see certain places, you know, and talk like, to her. Like where? She just want to go for a ride. I take her for a ride. I mean, nothing, you know, I mean, no, I ain't mean no harm or trying to do nothing I shouldn't be doing. You know, trying to, you know, be no idiot and no pervert or nothing. That's what he says now. But what about what he said to her online? You say, well, I do think you're damn sexy and was wanting to know if you have oh. ever had sex. Oh, yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah, well, I yeah. have it all right here. Oh, no, so you might as well just tell me right now. I ain't disputing it. No, yeah. I ain't disputing it. I'm just saying, damn. I, I, I think you probably have a very nice ass as well. I just fell into the conversation. I ain't going to see any time I no excuses for the things I said because I fell into the conversation. It was totally, uh, it, it was wrong. And, uh, you say, yeah, I'll be your bear, and we bears like tasting honey. When you read it back to me like that right there, I, and I realize what I said, no, you're right. What do you think would have happened if I wasn't here? And in right. fact, a 15-year-old girl was here. I told myself, I get in here to sit and just talk to her, you know. You just said you were going to take her for a ride in the truck. If she wanted to go, man. She How do you think a girl's father would feel if, if a 40-year-old man took a 15-year-old girl for a ride I, in a truck? He'd be uh, upset. And himself. he'd be justified but, with it. Oh, yes, he would. You own that rig yourself? No, sir. So you work for a company that owns that rig? Yes, sir. And how do you think they'd take to the fact you're out driving that rig around, going to meet a 15-year-old girl? Well, they, 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 would look, they would look at it on it as in a bad note and look at it you know, A bad note? Like the way it actually looks. You know what's wrong? It was foolish. It was foolish. It was the wrong thing to do, and it, you know, it won't happen again. I know you got a job to do, and I, it, you know, I see it all the time. And, uh, you see what all the time? On, on, on news reports. You've seen stories on television news about yeah, guys uh, coming yeah, over to yeah, meet yeah, underage yeah. kids. Yes, sir, but I, and, uh, I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults yes, who try to meet young teens on the Internet. If there's anything else you'd like to tell us, we're I, happy to hear it, and if not, you're obviously welcome to walk out the door you came in. I told myself on the way down here, just talk to her, you know, and just stay away from the, uh, the uh, sexual overtones. The 41-year-old leaves the house, and you know what happens next. Get on the ground, now! All the way down. All the way down. Yes, sir. Turns out this isn't Myrick's first time in handcuffs. Yes, sir. This individual, uh, Joseph Myrick, he's had 11 prior arrests. 11 prior arrests. 11 prior arrests. It could range from possession of drugs to uh, simple battery to theft. Pretty good little record that we have on him. Started as early as uh, 1983. He was never convicted on the battery or theft charges, but in the 1990s, he was convicted of six misdemeanors and one felony drug charge. After Myrick's arrest, his truck is searched. Cocaine. Where detectives find cocaine. Myrick is then brought in for questioning, where he appears to admit what he's done is wrong. Do you have any kids? No, sir. I got nieces and nephews. How would you feel if somebody did this thing? You want an honest answer? Honest answer. I'm going to kill him. Then the investigator asks Myrick about his use of cocaine. I'm, I'm going to tell you like it is. Both, when I talk, both times I did talk to her, you know, I, I was in town and, and I was under the influence of it. <clears throat> he seems to blame the cocaine for his Three, current two, predicament. One, He'll be charged with drug possession, along with attempting to commit child molestation and obscene Internet contact. I'm going to set the criminal attempt child molestation at 15000 the possession of controlled substance, 5,000. That's going to be our 130. Wow. I mean, he'd be way early if that's him. One thing that's disturbing about our investigations is that so many who show up look like nice guys, men you'd never suspect of possibly attempting to molest a child, just like this man. Open the front door, Amanda. Let's make sure he sees that you're there. He's 34-year-old Abalash Baskaran, a director of software development for a large computer company. He thinks he's here to meet a 13-year-old girl. Hey, come on in. Just fine, how are you? 
Come on. I'm just finishing up some water. Take your time. I'm making some sweet tea if you want to pour a glass. His screen name is Raj21US21. While chatting online with a decoy pretending to be 13, he asks, Hun, would you like to take me in your mouth? The girl says, I'm not sure how. So Raj21US21 says, we will learn as we go along. But just as they're about to sign off, he tells the decoy what he's doing is wrong, that he has to be cautious. Cautious? Why? You know, sex with minor is called rape. You don't want to have sex with me? So I just want to make sure everything is okay. I don't want to see a cop waiting to see me there. <laughs> he seems relieved when he sees our decoy and not a police officer. <laughs> Sit down, make yourself at home. Sure, thank you. I'm just getting these out so I don't get wrinkled. All right. So you've got a big afternoon planned, huh? Uh, Why don't you have a seat right there, please? What's going on? Nothing much. I thought I'll just make a friend and that's it. Told just to make a friend? Yeah. And who is the friend you were here to see? Um, some, uh, Amy. Amy. Right. A and how old is Amy? She said she was 13. 13? Yeah. And how old are you? 34. 34. Right. And why did you think it was okay at the age of 34 to come visit a 13-year-old girl home alone? I said, I mean, it is for sex I am not coming. For sex you are not coming? Yeah. So I'll just make a good friend. Um, so I'm educated. I have an MBA. You have an MBA? Yeah. You know, I'm married and, you know, the marriage is not going well, so... I'm sorry, you're married? Yeah, yes, I am. And, and the marriage is not going well? Yeah, so I you know, just wanted a friend to talk to, kind of. But explain to me how difficulty in your marriage led you to this house where you believed a 13-year-old girl was home alone. No, he said he's, you know, she's... she's uh, uh, good in studies and good in studies and I thought it is like a mature friend I mean okay, a mature guess. friend yeah where were you when you were having this chat with this 13 year old girl Amy were you at I, your, I was in office you were in your office yeah now does your boss know that you are online chatting with 13 year old girls I'm sure they don't so what would his bosses think Talk if they read a transcript of his pornographic chat. online chat you ask if she masturbates right you say I feel like kissing you now and suck on your blank and feel the tummy. Right. Um, that is the first day. Then I, you know, slept on that and realized it is not a good thing. I mean, you know, it is it's not something which I should do. Well, why even come over here? No, I mean, it's you know, just like working for one year. I thought, just thought I will just take a day off. And uh, so you took a day off to come over here? Yeah. So you told him you had something else to do. Oh, uh, who? The people at your office. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I love you so much, hon. You talk about being cautious. I know. She says, why? You say, you know, sex with a minor is called rape. Right. I understand. I'm so you know the law. Yeah, I understand the law. Well, Abby, there's a, there's a couple things you need to know. Yeah. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who meet teens online. Nothing else to say. Okay. Thank you. Since he's never seen one of our reports, he doesn't know that law enforcement is waiting outside to arrest him. Get on the ground! On the ground now! Get down! When he's taken in for questioning, he asks to speak to a lawyer. I mean, I'm a foreign national. Um, can I get an attorney or something? All right. What happens next, sir? Now you go to jail. Once at the jailhouse, he's fingerprinted and photographed. My wife and kids won't know where I am, so you can call and let them know. I'll get back with you on that in just a little bit. Then put behind bars, awaiting a hearing. Well, you're charged with criminal attempt child molestation. That's a felony. It carries a penalty of 1 to 20 years. How will he and all the others explain how they ended up caught in this investigation? I mean, I've been trying to find a good woman my age. I already had. When we come back, we'll hear more from the judge. And we'll hear plenty of excuses from the suspects. I've never done it before. First time I've done this right here. I've never done this before. When the catch a predator continues. All right, good afternoon. I'm Judge Webb of the Harris County Magistrate Court. The undercover operation in Fortson, Georgia is over, and the last of the suspects caught in our sting are appearing before a local judge. I'm not here to determine if you're guilty or innocent. For most of the men, the judge sets a bond of $40,000, restricts their use of a computer, and their interactions with minors, including their own children. You're not to have any unsupervised contact with your children. Do they live with you full time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, 
as a condition of your bond. I'm going to permit the contact, but it needs to be supervised. That was July. Now only two suspects remain in jail, unable to make bond. George Cleary and William Rowell. While just about all the men who showed up at our sting house said they weren't going to do anything illegal, none of them has had a chance to enter a plea. Although this man tries to argue his case at his bond hearing. I don't know for sure, but I hear a little bit of talk about this girl. She's an actor. She's 20 years old, actually. The judge explains that this is not the time to submit a defense. That will be at a later hearing. And as for what excuses the other suspected sex predators might come up with, here's a reminder of what they told us. Have you ever done this before? No. I've never done it before. First time I've done this right here? First time? Yes, sir. I swear to you, sir, I've never done this before. Have you ever chatted with an underage girl? Online? No, I have never done this. She's the first girl I talked to, that, you know, this... this Very first one. I mean, this, no, that, you know, yes, sir, I mean, I, you know, honest God. You, know, you know how many times I hear that. I, I, you hear it all the time, but I'm telling you, I said, you know... Do you think everybody could be telling me the truth? Oh, no. I'm sure they're not. And while many said it was their first time, a lot of them came prepared for the possibility of sex. Did you bring condoms with you tonight? I keep some in my Jeep. What about condoms? Yes, sir, I have them. Did you bring condoms? Yeah, I brought one, sir. I, I keep condoms in the truck. Can I have condoms in my car. For what? For safety purposes. In the meantime, we're heading west to Northern California to another hidden camera house, this time in Petaluma, the hometown of Polly Class, the young girl abducted and murdered by a sex predator, also one-time home of John Mark Carr, former suspect in the Jean Benet Ramsey murder. In Petaluma, you'll see more men parade to our house, some from the Silicon Valley as well as a doctor. Most say they were not really here for sex. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, I wasn't doing anything. Get his keys. I wasn't Get doing anything. In the wake of our Georgia investigation, Georgia's governor announced the state will triple the number of agents assigned to computer predator crimes. How do you and your family stay safe online? You can share your safety tips on our website at dateline.msnbc.com. That's all for now. I'm Stone Phillips. For Ann Curry and all of us at NBC News, thanks for watching.